In this video, we're going to show you how we turned a regular old pair of sneakers into a dope one of custom design. Who threw that busted ass Adidas? Now that we're adults and can support ourselves financially, we've gotten into the world of sneaker collecting. The great thing about being a sneakerhead, you don't need any athletic ability or any knowledge about sports in general. For us, it's all about interesting colorways, funky designs, and convincing ourselves a $200 pair of sneakers is a smart investment. One aspect of the shoe game is sneaker customization. One way to do this is by painting a perfectly good pair of shoes and creating a dope OG design that's a one of. This is our first attempt at painting shoes, so we got a $35 pair of Adidas that were mostly white. Because they were mostly white, it made it easy to add any color we wanted. For instance, painting over a dark color, you would have to either put a white base coat or add a whole lot of paint to cover it up. But before you do anything, you need to clean the shoe surface so that the paint will stick. We used Angulus brand shoe deglazer. You could apply it with a paper towel or a rag, but you might want to consider wearing some gloves because it's pretty strong stuff. Before you start painting, it's a good idea to figure out what you want to do first. Coming off the heels of our Swamp Punks t-shirt design, we thought it'd be dope to make a matching pair of sneakers. Most likely you're going to need to mix some paint, so deciding what colors you want to use is helpful. So we picked a few colors from our t-shirt art and made a mock-up using Photoshop to help decide what we'd do with the different panels of the shoe. Once we had our design, we started taping off the panels of the shoe we didn't want painted. To do this, we used some old blue masking tape lying around the house and used a razor knife to cut in around all the panels. Once everything was taped, we started mixing paint to get the colors we wanted. The printed design made it helpful to match all the colors we were going to use. I found that the painting process was relaxing, even therapeutic. I almost forgot that I had a surgical remover of a rare brain tumor found in the portal space of my lung of all places. And I'm currently awaiting the results of a brain MRI to see if I have one in my head as well. To speed up the process, we used a heat gun to dry the paint in between coats. After getting the bulk of the design completed, it was time to add the Swamp Punks logo. To do this, we used a Cameo 4 Silhouette vinyl cutter to cut out the stencils. We knew we wanted to use the airbrush for this, so we broke up the design in two parts. The outer border and the inner letters. We first laid down a two-tone white green with the airbrush. Next, we put the stencil letters on top of the light green so that it would be protected when we put on the darker color that would create the border. The first step went well, but we made the rookie mistake of not cleaning the airbrush in between uses and the paint dried up so we couldn't use the airbrush for the second part. So we ended up using a paintbrush to put on the darker green border. After the logo was done, we used the heat gun to dry the paint before taking off the stencils. Now it was time to take off the stencils for the big reveal. There was some seepage, but we had saved some paint from before so that we could do some touching up later. After letting the paint dry for 24 hours, we used the Angulus acrylic finisher. We put a few drops of the Angulus dollar in it so that it wouldn't have too much of a shine. Overall, the shoes turned out pretty clean and we're pretty happy with our first design. Uh -huh. 
Let us know what you think in the comments. We'd love to get some feedback and any advice is appreciated. And if you've got to have a Swamp Punks t-shirt design of your very own, check out the QQDDchannel.com backslash shop for your Swamp Punk merch.